guys, it's Sarah. And today we are going to talk about all of the books that I was sent by publishers in order to do a review for you guys. And this is going to be the start of a monthly series for me where every month I'm going to take all of the books that were sent to me that month and I'm going to read them and then do one big mashup review of all of those books. All of these books have come out in the month of January or they're coming out in the upcoming couple of weeks here left in the month. And these are all books that I have had personal contact with the publishers on. If I got sent anything unsolicited, it wasn't a priority for me. If I could get to it, I would, but if not, then it's not that big a deal. Um, I'm also not including any NetGalley books unless they were specifically sent a personal link to me from the publisher, which did happen in a couple of these instances. I have six books to talk to you about today and I'm going to go ahead and just go in order of publication. The first one that I have to talk about was sent to me from Berkeley and that is You Were There Too. This is by Colleen Oakley and this one is already released. It came out on January 7th and this one is an adult contemporary book and it follows a woman and she is her and her husband had just moved to this really small town. They moved from Philadelphia in a tiny apartment in the middle of the city, and they moved to this really small town kind of to get a little bit of a fresh start. Her husband is a doctor, and he had a really hard, complicated um, situation with a surgery that he was not handling very well, so he really wanted to kind of get away from it all. She also wanted to get a little bit of a fresh start, so they moved to this really small town to kind of, you know, get away from everything and just start start over basically. And so you're following them doing that. They are also in the middle of trying to get pregnant, but they're having some problems with that. Um, it does involve multiple miscarriages. So if that's something you're sensitive to, that's very present in here. So something to keep in mind on that. And the weird thing that happens when they're living in this town is that um, our main character is having these dreams. She's having dreams that involve a specific person, a man. It's not someone she knows. It's not someone she's ever met before. She doesn't know who this man is, but he is a recurring person in her dreams for years. It's been happening and it's, you know, different things are happening in her dreams, but he's always there. And she doesn't really know what it means. She doesn't know if it means anything. She just kind of brushes it off as I have these dreams about this man. And I don't know why, but it's kind of weird, but whatever. And there is an instance in here where uh, she meets one of her husband's patients. And um, her brother is with her. And her brother is the man that she's been dreaming about. And so it really takes her aback. <laughs> she doesn't know what this means. In conversations that she starts having with him, he confesses to her that she has also been in his dreams as well. So they are both dreaming about each other in, you know, kind of different situations. A couple of them are actually the same. And they're trying to figure out, does this mean anything? They definitely feel a connection to each other because of this. But does it actually mean, maybe are we supposed to be together? Do we know? They're trying to figure all that out, right? Amid all this stuff, other things are popping up. Other situations are happening in their lives that are kind of throwing wrenches and everything. And she's really finding herself lost and not really sure what she even wants out of her life anymore because it's throwing a big wrench in everything. Okay, <laughs> I ended up listening to this on audiobook because I picked it up after the release date. And I thought, you know, maybe I can go ahead and, you know, read it really quick through audio. And oh my gosh, I listened to this in two sittings. I started it on a Sunday, I think, and I finished it Monday. I could not stop listening to this book. And the audio is fantastic. It's really, really great narration and everything. Um, I did pick it up on Scribd. So if you have Scribd, it's on there. And I was not expecting to get everything out of this, what I did. It it went places I wasn't expecting it to go. It kept me guessing on where it was going to go because I really didn't know what any of these characters were going to end up doing. I loved all of the characters. They were all very complex and the way that they were interacting together made a lot of sense. And just, I'm telling you, I was listening to it and I had, I don't remember what I was doing. I think I was doing something on the computer, probably like editing or something. And I had to stop and just like put my hands on my head. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like, it goes places you don't expect it. And that's what I loved about it. Because this is a contemporary book, a lot of contemporary books can be very, very predictable. But this was not. And I just, I was blown away. 
buy it. I did not expect to love it as much as I did. I devoured it completely. I definitely want to read more from this author now. And I gave it five stars, which was a huge, huge, huge surprise. So um, obviously, I highly recommend it. This next one also just came out. It came out yesterday, and that is The Prized Girl, which came out on the 14th. This is by Amy K. Green. This one was sent to me by Dutton, and I did get this one through NetGalley, so they sent me a direct link through this one. And I really enjoyed this book. I was pleasantly surprised. This is a debut novel, so this is her first book. And this one follows the murder of a teenage girl who was really big in the beauty pageant community in her area. And it we're basically trying to solve her murder. And it's a dual timeline thing. So you're seeing what happens after her murder, which involves a lot of her family, including her half sister who does not get along with her family and didn't really get along with the victim or the victim's mother who is Ooh, she could have a whole nother book all by herself. She was something. And so you're getting the perspectives from both. So you're seeing, you're seeing her sister like try to figure out what's happening and what's going on. And she's trying to dive into what happened to her. She gets a little bit obsessive about it. And then you also are seeing what actually happened to the girl. So you're getting, you know, two perspectives, two timelines, all that stuff. Now, a lot of things happened in this book. I was really surprised by how much actually happened in here because you kind of feel like you know who the killer is through most of it. And so you're trying to figure out and piece together and, oh, could it be this person? Could it be this person? Maybe it's this person. That's kind of an easy person to blame. And maybe it's this person. So you do a whole lot of that, you know, as they're going through as well. And you're trying to find the clues and stuff. So that was interesting. Now this one goes, this one goes dark. There's some darker themes in here. There is definitely a um, pedophile issue in this book with um, a couple of older men who are obsessed with the girl who was murdered. And um, that was a little bit hard to read, just kind of knowing what their intentions were toward her. Yeah, it was just, I don't want to say anything more than that, but the characters were all so, so great. They really, really were. They were very complex characters. All, every single one of them had some sort of motive <laughs> for this girl. And so you're trying to figure out, you know, who knew what and who was doing what at the time and all that stuff. Uh, her sister is very unstable, borderline alcoholic, I would say, um, but not always in her right mind. Um, even though she has the best intentions to try to find her sister's killer, she also has some pretty ill intentions as well. And she's very flawed and she recognizes that she's not in denial about that. <laughs> and so that's that was very interesting too, just to see her kind of go on this journey and try to figure things out and then try to, you know, handle her own life, which is really hard in general anyway. The at-home atmosphere was awful. And um, yeah, her stepmother was pretty pretty crazy. It was, it was insane. I really enjoyed this book. I read it pretty quickly. Like I said, it's a really great debut. And I definitely, definitely think like this is worth the read to pick up if you guys can get a hold of it. Um, I would definitely recommend it. And I ended up giving it four stars. The next one is a book that comes out on January 21st. This one's been getting quite a bit of buzz lately. And that is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. And this one was sent to me from Wednesday Books. This is another one that I got through NetGalley as well. This one is a young adult contemporary and it follows two high schoolers who are both involved in their parents' businesses. And the way that they're involved is that they're involved in the social media aspect of it. So they both are restaurants. One is a big chain restaurant. The other one is a little mom and pop restaurant that's been around for a long time. And there is a situation that happens where the big chain is accused of stealing a recipe from the mom and pop store. And because of this, a big Twitter feud starts happening between these two restaurants. And there's a lot of pressure on the social media team to make sure you're keeping up, to make sure you're responding to things, reaching out to people, you know, getting all the likes, getting more followers, blah, blah, blah. It becomes this whole big war thing. And nobody really knows that there's two teenagers behind it and they go to school together and they actually know each other, but they don't know that they're the ones who are doing it, if that makes sense. It's almost like kind of a you got mail thing. Like we're feuding in public, but in private, we actually like each other, but we don't know that each other are doing this whole thing. So 
Um, it, it was very much like you got mail vibes for sure. So I think if you liked you got mail, I think you're going to really like this one. And I thought it was a cool twist on it to where it's like the social media aspect of it versus like email. And I thought it was really cute. Um, I really liked the characters. And I think that, you know, a lot of readers, especially younger readers, will definitely relate to all the social media because it talks about the memes and all the things and, you know, all that stuff and followers and all that. So I think it's really relatable to the young adult audience for that reason, definitely. And I was actually really surprised at how much I enjoyed this. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to really like it as much as I did, but I did. I really, really liked it. Um, I thought it was great. So definitely recommend it. Uh, the only thing that I didn't love about it is there was quite a bit of like the miscommunication type thing, which kind of drives me nuts sometimes. So um, I did give it four stars, but I think definitely if you like young adult contemporary, that this would be a good one. The next one was sent to me by Dutton, and this was another one that was sent directly from NetGalley. They sent me a link to it, and this one comes out on the 28th, and that is When You See Me. This is written by Lisa Gardner. Now, this one is an adult thriller, and it is part of her crossover series between the... DD series, I can't remember her last name, DD something, <laughs> and Kimberly Quinn, I believe that's the other one. Like they're, they're like two detectives and, you know, they're working together to do things. So, um, I have heard about Lisa Gardner and her books for quite a while. She's actually an author that's been recommended to me quite a bit, and I had never, like, picked any of her books up. I've always been interested in doing that, and I was going to, you know, start at the beginning and, you know, start at number one and do all that stuff. But uh, when I was offered this book, I was told by the publisher that, you know, this is something that you can go into without having read 20 other books to start out with. And I was like, okay, if I can do that and enjoy it and not feel lost, I'm in. And you definitely can. You can do that. You do get a little bit of background on Dee Dee, and particularly as a character. And well, Kimberly too, you kind of like, you know who they're married to, you kind of know their family situation. So that may kind of spoil things as far as the books go. Like if you want to start at the beginning and start fresh, like I know who Dee Dee's married to, and I know that she has kids and all that stuff. So if that's like a big thing throughout the book series, I don't really know. Um, I'm assuming it probably is part of her character development, but I already know that. So, but I don't think that's like a huge spoiler either. Like it's probably something that you can kind of pick up along as you're going through the series. But um, so you do get some background on that. You get a not a ton of case background, which is good because, you know, it does reference other cases that they've worked on that I'm assuming are in other books, but it doesn't give you like, you know, big spoilers on anything like that. So I think it is something that you can go into first if you want to. I definitely want to read more Lisa Gardner now because I really, really, really enjoyed this book. So this one follows a, a girl who is found murdered or it's a it's a really old body that's found in the mountains of Georgia and um Dee Dee is sent in to uh investigate and or to help investigate I guess just because she has a really good reputation for this kind of stuff she is also partnering with a woman who is a surviving victim of the killer who is suspected of killing this girl because of some of the signs and some of his activities and everything. She's partnering with one of his survivors um, to try to figure out if this was actually him. And so they go there and they're trying to figure all this stuff out. They end up finding way more than they were expecting. <laughs> and yeah, it's, uh, whew, it's a lot. This is, there was a lot in here that I was not expecting. It went to some pretty dark places as well. Um, there is a girl who is unable to communicate in this book um, because of a very specific reason, but she's one of the keys to solving this. She knows a lot, but she can't communicate all that great. So um, that was really interesting and trying to see Dee Dee try to communicate with her. She's kind of the only one who could connect with her. And so that was um, really cool. And then it also, you know, it goes into some details about the victim's captive captivity and you know all that stuff that was kind of hard to read because he de he kept her as a sex slave so um that was a little bit hard to read <laughs> about but it's in there and it definitely made you know it gave it more of a depth to the story that way but i really 
really enjoyed it. And the only thing that I didn't love, there was a little, there was actually a little bit of a paranormal element to it that was just kind of like, not my favorite. I mean, it was fine. It didn't ruin the book for me, but it, it did prevent me from giving it like a full five stars. I gave it a four and a half and it was just kind of, it didn't seem to fit very well to me. So I don't know, but I really, really liked it. And Lisa Gardner is on my radar now to read more from. So I may, <laughs> one of these days, start from the beginning of her DD series and um, see about starting to make my way through those. But I really, really liked it. The next one was sent to me from Knopf. And this one also comes out on January 28th. And this is Wildfire by Carrie Mack. This one is a young adult contemporary and it follows a set of friends who decide to go hiking and it's kind of a um, let's go hiking and escape from everything because I'm seeing you go down this big spiral so we're going to go hiking and it's going to solve all our problems type thing. And this one was short. I got through it pretty quickly but it wasn't my favorite. Now this book um, follows our you know our two main characters here Annie and Pete and Annie is going through a hard time. Annie has a lot of problems. Um, her and Pete have been, you know, best friends for a very long time. And it's very prominently known that they are best friends and they tell everybody they're best friends and blah, blah, blah. Everyone suspects there's more, but there never has been. It's just been best friends. Um, however, Annie starts developing feelings for Pete, even though he has a girlfriend and has never really reciprocated, you know, those types of feelings towards Annie. Um, so you do see her struggle with that as well. And she gets a little bit possessive over him, I think. And so Annie experiences a big loss in her life. And um, she's dealing with grief. So a lot of this book is about grief. I would say it's actually more about grief than anything else, um, even though it was kind of marketed towards like an unrequited love. But I mean, it was, but it was more about the grief because that's mostly what Annie's dealing with. And the reason that Pete takes her out into the woods to go hiking. And it's something that they've always done. So they're very comfortable hiking and, you know, going out and being in the wilderness and everything. But they're doing this in a time where there are a lot of wildfires happening and they just kind of assume that they're safe because, you know, they've done this their whole lives and they know how to avoid them and they know what to do and all that stuff. But it comes to a point where one of them gets hurt physically on the hike and it gets to a point where it's just, they find themselves in a really impossible situation, basically. And... Uh, yeah, so I, for such a short book, a lot happened in here. So that was, you know, that was good. So the pacing was good. It wasn't, you know, like a slow book or anything. But I think I was just expecting a little bit more out of it. I kind of just was reading it. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. And that was just kind of how I felt the whole way just okay. <laughs> and I don't know what I would change about it to make it more of to give it more of the wow factor. But um, I didn't enjoy Annie as a main character. You know, she was going through a lot, but I just, I had a hard time feeling bad for her. You know what I mean? Or just having those emotions where I just really felt for her. She kind of drove me nuts a little bit. Um, I really liked Pete. I thought his character was great, but yeah, her, I don't know. I just, something about her rubbed me the wrong way. So I ended up giving it a three stars. To me, it wasn't my favorite. It wasn't the best. Is it worth the read? Maybe. I don't know. I, like, I don't know that I would like super recommend it. I think if you like hiking books, you would probably really like this. I'm not huge on hiking. So like, that's not something that I enjoy as an activity, nor reading about it. So maybe that maybe that's another thing that kind of hit me a little bit. I did enjoy the hiking parts of it, though, like when they were doing that kind of stuff. That was my favorite part of it. And the ending, I don't, mm, I didn't really love the ending either. So um, yeah, but three stars. And the last one I have here is Diamond City. This is written by Francesca Flores. This was sent to me from Wednesday Books. And this one comes out on the 28th as well. And this one was fantastic. This is a young adult fantasy book. And it follows a, um, a young girl and her name is Aina. And she is living in a world where there's, oh gosh, <laughs> um, she's kind of living in, like, there's definitely a, 
like a caste system. So she's on the bottom. She's like a bottom feeder, if you will. Uh, she was orphaned at a young age and has just witnessed complete violence against the people for where she's, the area where she's from, you know, like definitely a lot of discrimination, stuff like that. And the whole thing about the magic system in here is that it centers around like um, jewels and diamonds and stuff. So um, there are some diamonds and crystals and things that have powers. Now, in order to use those, you have to use blood. So trigger warning for that. There is cutting in here because people have to cut themselves and use the blood for blood magic. So there, that is a big aspect in here. Um, so if that's something that you're sensitive to, be warned about that. Um, but Aina is um, taken in as a young orphan and she's taken in by a man who raises her to be an assassin. And he raises her to have, you know, like certain skills in order to serve his purposes and to um, fulfill jobs for his clients. People are hiring him to send assassins out to do certain things and to kill certain people or to get certain information. And so she's a part of all of this. And she is uh, proving herself to be very talented, kind of rising up in the ranks underneath this man who seems to hold a lot of power in the city. And so because of that, she is very well protected. He takes care of her. He, you know, room and board, all that stuff. She has a, a safe place to live, food to eat, all that. Um, no one can really hurt her. If anyone even threatens to hurt her, they're taken care of. He protects her that way, basically. So she ends up landing one of the biggest jobs he's ever been hired for, and it's to kill a very untouchable person in this city. So kind of almost like a royal person. Someone is supposed to be untouchable. So she is tasked with killing this person. So she tries to do this. <laughs> of course, there's complications, right? She's also still very young. She's only 18. So she's very, very young. And, you know, she makes a lot of mistakes. And because she's making a lot of mistakes, everything about her now is questioned. And he's quite the Cole is his name. I'm trying to remember what his name was. Cole. He is questioning whether or not she's good enough now and whether or not she can stay in his protection and all that stuff. So she's really watching everything that she knows kind of crumble around her. While all this is happening, she is still trying to assassinate this person so she can clear her name for herself with him. And she's finding out a lot of things that she thought was so is not so. And now she's questioning everything and she doesn't know who to trust. Um, her life is really in danger at this point. And yeah, so this was thrilling. I'm telling you, I read it really, really quickly. And it was just so interesting. Like the magic system was really cool. The way that she finds out the information was really good. Like the pacing was really good on that. And you're seeing her find out all this stuff. And then you're getting shocked as well. And you know, I was shocked quite a few times in here. And the action is great. The fight scenes are great. Um, people are ruthless, which I love. And I loved it. I was really surprised. I thought that this was going to be really good. But oh my gosh, I gave it five stars. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. And I can't wait to read the next book, because this is the first book in a series. I don't know how many books it's supposed to be, if it's supposed to be like a trilogy or longer than that. I don't know. I can't find any information about it yet, but I know that this is book number one. So when book number two starts being announced, I'm going to keep my eye out for that. But 1000%, if you're a young adult fantasy fan, I would highly recommend picking this one up. And one quick mention real quick, you're probably wondering why I'm not talking about My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Uh, number one, I'm still reading it. So I'm almost done. I'm right there. Um, however, the release date for this has been pushed back. This was supposed to be released on January 28th, but it is now being released on March 10th. So I am... Um, finishing it up now, but I'm going to wait and talk about this with my March arcs because I don't want to talk about it too far ahead. So I'll talk about it more in depth later. I'm taking really good notes, but I can tell you. Yes. Okay, guys, that is going to be it for me today. Those are all the books that I received from publishers that I agreed to do a review for. And I really, really enjoyed, you know, all of these books. So I'm really glad I was able to read and review them and, you know, had a few five stars in there. So that was really awesome.
So huge thanks to all the publishers for working with me and for providing me a free copies of these books so that I can share them with you guys. I will have links to all of these books down below. So if you guys want to either get a copy of the ones that are already out or if you want to pre-order copies that are coming out um, here in the next couple weeks of the month, um, make sure you go and do that for sure. And um, let me know if you guys have any questions and I will talk to you guys again soon. Hope you have a great day. Bye.